This video tutorial is about everything outside the armadillo and the uninspired sleep help. We'll be looking at deciduous trees, the veggie gardens, worm bins, composting, xeriscaping, those are the sumps and the large concrete apron which would harvest rainwater and send it to the underground water tanks, namely a grey water tank, an additional grey water tank and a white water tank. Firstly we will look at deciduous trees or landscaping which means falling off at maturity or tending to fall off and is typically used in order to refer to trees or shrubs that lose their leaves seasonally, most commonly during autumn, and to the shredding of other plant structures such as petals after flowering of fruit when ripe. On the screen we have deciduous trees, typical deciduous uh, trees most commonly used. We have the maple tree, the oak tree, the birch tree, the horse chestnut, the beech, and the ash. Look at the different shape and forms of these trees. Also look at the density of the leaves or the foliage and the structure. Imagine the leaves falling off and that would give us an idea of the branches which will be visible during winter. In a sustainable practice where we use deciduous trees the choice of these trees or large shrubs are critical. In this diagram, we have a summer scenario and a winter scenario. A deciduous tree during summer with all its foliage, the sun in position, and as you can see, the, su the sun cannot get to the building. In other words, the tree screens the sun and provides shading to the building, keeping it cool. However, in the winter situation, we have the sun, as you can see, slightly lower in the sky compared to the sun higher in the sky during summer. The sun would shine through this tree and into the building. And from a passive solar perspective, it would heat up like the concrete walls, the concrete floor, and so on. There, those good heat sinks, concrete bricks or cement blocks, would uh, heat up the building during summer by releasing the energy which was harvested during the day and that will make the building more cost effective to heat during winter. In the next step we will look at the deciduous trees in relation to the building. Now when we zoom in uh, we see that we have a different sizes of deciduous trees to the north of this building and the sun sits over here somewhere to see more details about shadows and shading uh, go to the video clip on this channel where it is discussed in depth what is important is the height of the trees the deciduous trees chosen the width the density of the foliage how close these trees are to each other. Also very important is the distance it is planted away from the building and the height from the bottom of the tree to where the foliage starts is also critical. Now one could clean these as they grow and keep it open because one would like to have a lovely view out, you don't want uh, a hedge in front of you. You want that uh, opportunity to view uh, nature and to extend uh, the, your, your view or the scenery in this building. The next chapter of our discussion is the system as a whole. So a quick overview is the leaves of the deciduous trees would drop during winter. You will have a lot of leaves. You have to pick those up or clean it up with a garden vac and throw these leaves into the composting bin which sits right there. 
From the composting bin, after a couple of months, we would be able to use the compost in the veggie gardens. We've got two veggie gardens over here. I also have a worm bin right here, and I'll explain in detail how a worm bin works a little bit later. So we will harvest the worm juice right here. And as the worms eat and move up through the different layers, uh, we will be able to pull this tray out and use this compost into the veggie gardens or elsewhere as well. The other component, just an additional component to this system, is xeriscaping. Now, what we have here in a, a xeriscaping scenario is where we have trees and shrubs we do, which don't use a lot of water. In other words, we minimize the amount of water for these specific plants and shrubs and trees. We have the plants here. We have some stepping stones right there, some flagstones, some bark which covers the ground, which would retain the moisture. You could also use vermiculite. Vermiculite is small chips. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a stone really. A, the properties are it absorbs water and it's like spongy. And if you uh, work that into your ground, it would retain the water and release that water slowly in the soil. But more about that uh, later. We also have a large concrete apron around this building. Two large sumps. There could be more. Could be one. Maybe we could have one in front here as well. This is just an additional bed where we could plant other deciduous uh, trees, shrubs, flowers, etc. And uh, yeah, we haven't finished the planning, but that's just an area demarcated for some more planting. We're going to have a look at the bottom of this building. In other words, we are moving underground now. So we can see there's some pipes or tubes connected from the sumps to the water tanks right there. And these sump, that sump over there, uh, the water would flow into these tanks. Now, the colors which we have in this instance, uh, we have these bluish containers, which represents gray water, and gray water tank number two. Gray water is water which is harvested from the concrete apron, and that would run into these tanks, and it would be stored. That could be used uh, in the garden, for plants, trees, flowers, veggie gardens, etc. And then I have a third tank right there. The fault is not shown is on the inside. So a small pump would send the water maybe from grey water tank number two to the white water tank, the only one. And as it flows to this tank, it would go through a filter and it would filter that water and we would call this white water. And white water is safe for drinking, and this water could be pumped uh, to the building. We will use the photovoltaic panels uh, to power the batteries, or to charge the batteries, and the electricity from the batteries would run the pump, which means it won't cost us anything. The last component in uh, the system is additional water tanks, just like to show you that which sits here. So the water harvested from the building, from the roofs, etc. I haven't shown in detail how it's done, but we will have small sumps and the water would flow from those sumps into this tall uh, water tank, which sits there. It will have different compartments and we can manage that. But let's, let, let's assume uh, we have one water tank, which sits right there. Now, the reason why we have this water tank, which sits here, is that we want the water slightly higher than the cisterns. I'm just going to show that quickly. Open up with a section tool, which sits there, and we have a toilet right there. So we will have some pipes, which runs down and towards the cistern. There's the cistern of the toilet, and we will send some gray water. Now, the water right here which i've just explained which will be harvested from the roof and sent into this tank on the side or inside the cavity of the roof 
the, wa the, the water would be sent to the cistern and we don't really need a pump because the water will automatically runs to the cistern because the water is higher and the law of gravity says that anything that's that's high uh, in, in in this building would like to follow the easiest path down so it would follow the path down by following the water pipe to the cistern just some short comments on the raised veggie gardens and the image you see of the veggie gardens uh, it's best to have raised veggie gardens it's very convenient it's easy to work in the upright position compared to bending down low uh, yeah just much easier to work in secondly the second image uh, we see here is a worm bin now the worm bin have compost as well as worm juice so the water produced by the earthworms or tiger worms would flow down into the container and that container with a juice in it or the, solu or the solution has to be diluted uh, to use in the veggie gardens the compost is taken out from the lower layers because as you throw food scraps veggies fruit etc into this bin the worms would eat away and produce uh, solid compost right here and that tray at the bottom you always remove it from the bottom but i, le I will leave that uh, to you to do some research and find out more uh, about that i have a large compost bin right here which you just fill up very simple keep it moist and over time it will produce compost i'm not going to comment too much too much on that because most of you know how that works i'm going to comment now on xeriscaping now the plants you can get the information from a specialist at a nursery or you can do the research on the internet on xeriscaping now succulents are probably the most common used plants because in arid regions very dry regions they just survive they don't need that much water so the the planning and the design of this garden is is really the owner's choice there are many different styles which i'm going to comment on now uh, you can do the research about that one advantage is is that water that runs off a xeriscape garden because it won't absorb that much water or it's usually constructed or designed uh, to have quite a a runoff of water so the runoff of water in this instance um, could be channeled to the underground water tanks for additional water so as you can see this building would harvest lots and lots of water which is very beneficial for this building so the the owner could have more veggie gardens even an orchard uh, if required it's all about uh, energy efficiency independence self-sufficiency and uh, yeah being off the grid with passive solar but at the same time uh, pr providing and producing your own organic food which is just a lovely idea